I ask you, through this address, to join me and the Royal Statistical Society in championing four interconnected sources of impact. The first is to celebrate the achievements of the discipline of statistics and demonstrate that it is worthy of investment at this time when statistics matters so much. Too many statistics departments in universities are in trouble underappreciated, caught in a system where others have had sharper elbows or where the jewels of success glitter more visibly in the eyes of those who hold the purse strings. We can never know which investments in theory and method will pay dividends in future applications. We must make the case if our discipline is to thrive in the long term. David Cox, with characteristic understatement, has noted that there is no shortage of interesting new ideas and challenging problems many stemming from the relatively large data sets now so common. His inspirational call is for statisticians to be involved in important issues in science, technology and public affairs, and thereby to herald a major new period of innovation. The role of academic affairs within the society has been upgraded in recent years through the leadership of Valerie Isham. We can build on this and find an ever clearer voice in our own right through the Committee of Professors in Statistics and with our friends on the Council for Mathematical Sciences, and more widely. The Royal Statistical Society has world-leading journals. We have an outstanding tradition of ordinary meetings. We have an appeal that encompasses all substantive subject disciplines. We work actively with all of the UK's research councils, many other professional and learned societies, and a plethora of bodies in the UK and across the world. As Valerie Ocean observed in her presidential address, we should celebrate the diversity that statistics encompasses and make it our strength. Open access publishing is a major threat to the society's income in the medium term. We must manage the transition well, but as scientists, we must embrace it. Open access publishing also opens up the data sets on which research in so many disciplines is based. And those data sets, which are becoming open, are getting bigger. Open big data provides a unique opportunity for the discipline of statistics to add value. We can form new partnerships in multidisciplinary teams. We can develop and cross-fertilize ideas for analysis. We can create new applications and methods and use these amazing data sets as the basis for new theoret theoretical insights into the discipline of statistics itself. To give us strength at this moment of opportunity, we should celebrate the role models of our discipline. We're not short of them. Simply looking at the achievements of the last four guy medalists in gold should get others to sit up and appreciate the range and depth of what statistics can offer. John Kingman's work on stochastic processes has fundamentally changed the way we understand issues as wide-ranging as population genetics, the way cues work, and the management of power stations. C.R. Rao's work on estimators has enabled us to understand the validity of claims made in using, using data of all kinds. How confident can we be that this is right? Is the result biased? How much data do we need to get a more precise result? Jim Durbin, who died last year, age 88, developed statistical tests which formed the basis of the analysis of data across all the sciences and other disciplines, as well as techniques for making sense of time series that are so essential to economics. John Nelder developed the generalized linear model and made groundbreaking contributions to experimental design and statistical computing, amongst others. Without his work, we will be unable to interpret patterns in large and complex data sets in the manner that's now commonplace. The contribution of these four people to our understanding of the world is immense. We take their work for granted. It enables us to make better decisions these people are recognised and appreciated within our profession. They should be household names. The second area of impact is to show confidence in our own professional qualifications. They're world class and should have a special value for those who hold them. This is especially true for chartered statisticians, but our other qualifications too could be taken up by many more people. Our professional affairs committee, with able guidance and stewardship from Trevor Lewis and now also Steve Pike, has given us a position recognised across the world, which is a great platform from which to build. It should be as unthinkable 
for a major piece of statistical work to be overseen by someone who is not a chartered statistician, as it would be for a complex medical procedure to be carried out by someone who is not a qualified doctor. Responsibility for a bridge to be given to someone who is not a chartered engineer, or annual accounts to be signed off by someone who is not a chartered accountant. The value of chartered status for statisticians is becoming increasingly recognised. It is a prestigious award that attests to professionalism and quality of work. It is an award that is valued by employers, clients, colleagues and funders. It is an award of personal value to the holder. The Gradstat scheme, as a stepping stone to chartered status, is now well established. The process for revalidation is embedded and is built upon good practice from other professions where chartered status is widespread. The work of several sections of the society reflects the professional work done by statisticians. The quality improvement section, with its links to the Chartered Quality Institute and the British Standards Institution, is a good example. The business and industrial section is another, exploring themes like innovation in the workplace. Or the environmental statistics section, looking at the impact of environmental extremes on the insurance industry. Statisticians play prominent roles in medicine, pharmaceuticals, finance, retail, technology, and many more sectors. We need to cherish the professional statisticians operating in universities, businesses, government, and other institutions. They need to be supported in taking their place as thought leaders in academia and counsellors to leaders in industry and public life. As Hal Varian, chief economist of Google, has said, Statistics is the new sexy profession. The profession where you are making a real difference to the success of your company, your institution, your country. The profession with a special ability to make sense out of data and improve quality of service, drive efficiency and deliver growth. The third source of impact is statistics for the public interest. Three examples of the work of the society illustrate the kind of work that is to be done. The guide by the Statistics and the Law Working Group on the probative value of DNA evidence. The work of the Panel on Statistics Ecosystem Change on the scale and uncertainty challenges of ecosystem services and natural capital valuation. The policy statement issued with the supportive endorsement of statisticians in the pharmaceutical industry on best practice for statisticians in the reporting and publication of pharmaceutical industry sponsored clinical trials. These are all areas of deep public interest, affecting decisions that affect all of us. Statistics for the public interest also encompasses those official statistics that provide the management information system for UK PLC. The first wave of development of official statistics was closely associated with the beginnings of the society. The creation of the Office of the Registrar General in 1836 provided both a catalyst and a central resource to comment on current economic and social problems and to provoke action from government. Over more recent generations, the development of official statistics has mirrored the challenges faced by the state. The political imperative to build new economies after the Second World War was a period when symbiosis between state and statistics was especially strong, as witnessed by the investment in the systems of statistics supporting the national accounts. The UK government statistical service, service saw a blossoming during the 1970s, followed by a decade where its role was questioned and sharply focused by government. It's from 1992 that the current link between UK official statistics and citizenship can be traced. Norman Lamont, then Chancellor of the Exchequer, announced it is vital that the government should have the information it needs, but official statistics are produced not just for the government, but for the benefit of business and for the public at large. A more general political focus on the citizen provides an opportunity to extend this message. Indeed, reliable social and economic statistics were recognised as fundamental to the Prime Minister's Citizens' Charter. The Open Government White Paper of 1993 noted that official statistics are collected by government to inform debate, decision-making and research, both within government and by the wider community. Vital as this is, open access to official statistics provides the citizen with more than a picture of society. It offers a window on the work and performance of government itself, allowing the impact of government policies and actions to be assessed. 
These themes for official statistics found even clearer voice in 1997 in the incoming Labour government's programme for constitutional reform. Greater independence for statistics from government was positioned in a package of measures designed to give citizens a stronger voice and to move government closer to the people. This package also included devolution for Scotland and Wales, creating a mayor for London and freedom of information. A new statistics commission to give independent oversight of official statistics separate from government was established in 2000. But many felt that an even more radical approach was needed. The society developed a vision for national statistics in which Tim Holt as president wrote that the use of statistics pervades our society. Statistics must meet levels of quality and integrity that will command public confidence. A fundamental part of this is the enactment of comprehensive statistical legislation that guarantees statistical quality, integrity and productivity. The enactment of the Statistics and Registration Service Act 2007 was therefore a significant milestone, enshrining in law the public good mission for statistics at the service of citizens. There is now a chance for the community of official statistics to reach out and embrace other communities involved in statistics that shape public affairs, including the world of market research and statistics emanating from private, voluntary and a plethora of public bodies. This wide community for public statistics is now poised, with Andrew Dilnock as its leader, to deliver for the citizen user a new kind of power. The power of statistical information, readily available and in easy to access forms, that gives citizens a voice in shaping the world around them and in making decisions about themselves, their families and their communities. The fourth source of impact for statistics is statistical education and literacy. The Royal Statistical Society launched the, the Get Stats campaign on World Statistics Day in 2010. The 10-year Get Stats campaign has struck a chord. With financial support from the Nuffield Foundation, as well as funding and encouragement from a variety of other partners for specific projects, including the Institute of Actuaries for Research Work, the Department of Business Innovation and Skills for Work with the Media, and SAS for Statistical Literacy Work in Parliament. The first years of the campaign have met their goal of mobilising partners and setting the direction for the future. The 2010 position, revealed through polling by Ipsos Mori and Vox Pops on the streets, would be amusing if it was not so terrifying. There is limited awareness of, or attention given to statistics. Statistics is seen as boring, lies, damn lies, difficult, irrelevant. The campaign seeks to turn this around, so that by 2020, there will be wide, widespread statistical awareness. Statistics will be valued as useful to people. Greater understanding will improve trust. Lack of statistical skills will be perceived as a disadvantage. The top priority is to improve statistical education at all levels. Statistics has a vital role to play, not just in its own right, but also as an essential skill in so many other disciplines biology, economics, engineering, geography, medicine, pharmacy, physics, politics, psychology, sociology, just a few examples where statistical methods play a major role in the advancement of the substantive discipline. In so many sectors, statistics is essential to success, yet the quantitative skills deficit has been well documented. This is increasingly recognised as a national problem that requires a people pipeline with much greater capacity than we've had in recent times. The Nuffield Foundation report, Is the UK an Outlier?, presents a shocking picture of just how far behind international comparators we are in terms of upper secondary mathematics education. For statistics, the position is even more perilous, with relatively few A-level students taking up optional statistical elements within the curriculum. The Royal Statistical Society Centre for Statistical Education at Plymouth University has played a special role in statistical education at all ages with globally recognised initiatives such as Census at School. Their work shows what can be done. A serious strategic approach to statistical education is needed in our schools and universities. In addition to active engagement with the world of education, the first two years of the Get Stats campaign focused on three other groups, seen as the most important intermediaries, 
who could help reach or shape public perceptions and attitudes. Politicians, the media, and employers. In Parliament, GetStats has run seminars on, for example, the role of data and statistics in evidence-based health policy, the way statistics are used to assess the performance of schools, the need for data and statistical know-how by the new police and crime commissioners, and the numbers behind the budget. In the media, in 2012 alone, 31 workshops were held with 25 different clients. This involved 356 journalism students, 70 working journalists, and 105 press officers. At the same time, the RSS Awards for Statistical Excellence in Journalism received a record number of nominations in 2012, their seventh year. With employers, GetStats is seeking to raise awareness, support continuing professional development activities in various workplaces, and more generally draw attention to the role of statistics in improving competitiveness. The next phases of the campaign, to be chaired by Robert Choate, will progressively extend its reach to change perceptions of statistics, attitudes towards it, behaviours and levels of skill and confidence across the population. Power is shifting. The world of statistics is shifting too. If we are indeed living in a time when citizens have more power to influence the decisions that affect their lives, then the power of statistics must be put in their hands so that the influence they exert can be based on sound evidence. I argued in 1997 that given the growing role of the citizen, at that time expressed through the Citizens' Charter and Open Government Policies of John Major's government, Working in partnership together, the community of statisticians must ready itself to provide a vital medium of understanding to fit the needs of the new millennium. In 2013, the International Year of Statistics, statistics and statisticians are now ready.